My name's Michael. I thought I'd, um, I've been playing around with uh, Docker recently, so I thought I'd put something together with uh, Bedrock after seeing Chris talk about how to make WordPress better. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd go over some of the sort of like pros and cons and how I set it up and how it's configured and stuff like that, just to uh, give you an overview. Um, but yeah, so first of all, the, the purpose of what I set up um, is for development use only. It could be expanded at a later date for production use, but it's very much only just sort of for picking up a project, running it, and off you go. Um, it could potentially be made to scale, um, but yeah. So I thought I'd go over sort of like some reasons to why to use Bedrock with this. Um, so some of the nice things are that you get dependency management. So all of the WordPress plugins can be installed with Composer. Um, all of your third-party code is kept out of your version control, which is the second nice thing. You can put WordPress in version control, um, including uh, all your Docker Compose files and all your Docker files, uh, which means that your environments can be um, sort of like versioned and managed. So everybody is always working off the same environment, essentially. So you've got none of those mismatches in PHP config or anything like that, um, as it's all in source control. Um, Bedrock has better security. Uh, so it's got some improved security libraries for password management. Um, and it also keeps uh, the folder structure a bit better, so your sort of like code is out of the web root and only WordPress itself is accessing the web root. Um, and it has uh, .env configuration, so again, all of your settings and secret credentials and stuff like that are kept out of your source control. So yeah, so um, the containers, there's two containers, there's a, so two kind of servers essentially. There's a database uh, uh, using MariaDB and the application server, which is a custom uh, configured server. Uh, so this is um, the Docker Compose file, uh, which is where you define what your sort of structure of the project is gonna be. Uh, so here I'm saying I'm gonna use the default uh, MariaDB container, which is uh, on the Docker Hub, which is kind of like a repo for Docker containers uh, provided by MariaDB themselves. Uh, I set up a volume, which is so that we can um, keep our data separate from the container. So the container can be destroyed and started as much as you want, but your data will stay um, sort of in state. Uh, always restart it if it crashes. And then we configure my ports to my local machine um, to the uh, port on the Docker container itself, and then pass it through some environment variables for setting up the passwords. And then the second container is configured, which I've called project. Now this is a custom one that I've made. Um, so I set the build context to a folder that I have, which is where I've stored bedrock and all the root of um, WordPress. Um, you uh, link it up to um, the DB container um, here and here. So it makes sure that DB is running and it creates a private network between it and DB. And then I just set up the web ports. Uh, so 8080 on my machine will go to port 80 uh, on the container. Um, and then at the bottom of the compose file, you have to sort of like declare your uh, volume for the database so that it stores um, the data and can connect, uh, correctly sort of uh, hook that together. So the actual application server um, is all configured in one file called a Docker file. So you just write out kind of like a bash script almost um, how you want your machine to be made and then it will go ahead and it will just build that and it will cache each individual step. So I've based mine off of another one which is provided by PHP Group, which is their PHP 7 container with Apache. Um, so at the top of the file, I just say, this is from here, and it will go and download and build that version, and then it will apply my stuff on top of it. Um, so to begin with, I uh, run a load of apt-get installs. I've kind of like, this is a big, long piece of code. Uh, the repo's here where this is all available on GitHub, so if you want to have a play around and see, but it just installs things like Git, um, we'll get an unzip and stuff like that, so I can do a lot of kind of composery stuff. And also has like a default PHP and e-config, which I've pulled off the default WordPress container, um, so it's kind of like how they intended the config to be set up, so just for ease I did that. So the next part is kind of where I start actually building how I want to set up the container. So I enable uh, SSL and rewrite and stuff by doing this run command. Uh, I change my directory to the attempt directory, and then I've got a script within the uh, folder structure called um, composer install, which gets copied over, 
um, I'll then make it executable and run that. And that's uh, from composer.org. It's just a um, way to programmatically install Composer on the machine with the latest version. Um, so that just runs and installs that. Uh, then I um, change sort of like where Docker's working from. Uh, so I change that to the web route. Um, I will uh, make a SSL directory for Apache. At the moment, that's not configured, but it's kind of like an optional thing. Um, and then I'll copy any keys that are provided in the config folder, um, which are excluded from Git in the Git ignore file by default. Uh, I've then got a sort of a, a base vhost file set up to, um, it's got all the SSL excluded, but just a, a WordPress sort of point it to it. Um, so I'll disable the default site and enable that, and then just restart Apache. Um, and then this is where um, it gets a bit interesting. So I've got a, a runtime script um, that will, when you first start up the Docker container, it will go and run Composer automatically, um, and then start Apache as the command. So uh, the entry point here, so I copy it all over, um, and then set the entry point to runtime. So when you first start the container, it will run Composer for you, but then the command um, is to run Apache, so if the container crashes, it will make sure that Apache is the uh, process that's running uh, in the foreground. And so that's pretty much it, and that's the uh, script that it copies over, uh, so it just literally changes directory and uh, runs Composer install. Uh, and then in the Docker Compose file, that's where I've mounted the local project, uh, which I can go back. I think I forgot to mention that. So just here, this is where I've said mount the local project folder on my machine to the web root directory. Um, so yeah, um, one of the things that I uh, thought about was how do I, once I've sort of set up WordPress and it's all running, how do I actually get the data onto my machine? So if I need to dump it and then actually upload it to a server to a production environment, um, you can actually just run standard MySQL commands from your local machine if you've got it installed. Um, but you've just got to access the port that you configured in Docker Compose um, and then pass it through the regular uh, sort of commands and passwords and stuff like that. And it'll actually just create a dump file for you. Um, so it almost, so Docker's really nice. It sort of almost works as if it's on your local machine, but it's all sort of containerized and packaged up so you don't have to have it running all the time. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's just a sort of a dump of code, but I've got a little, uh, I was going to do a little bit of a demo of uh, this working. So hopefully it's going to work. So, oh yeah. <laughs> risky, risky, I know. I've tested it a few times. So I've already built the machine. Um, so normally you would do Docker, uh, Docker Compose. Uh, I can't spell. Compose. Um, uh, you can build the project in individually, but if you just do a uh, Docker Compose up with a TAC D, that says um, boot up the application and then run it as a background process, basically. Um, so I've already built uh, the containers, so it just literally grabs them, starts them back up again. Um, I've set the uh, um, host record in my um, uh, on my local machine to point to wpdev.example.com. And so if I just go to that, it should just load up WordPress. So yay, it's working. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. it's, it's very sort of uneventful. It takes about five minutes normally to build the whole process. So I can do uh, Docker compose down, uh, compose, and that will just uh, sort of stop the containers. Um, and you can run normal Docker commands on it. Uh, so if you want to list your containers, see if they're running, it takes a little while to stop them. Unfortunately, any time today now. So there's a, you can run normal Docker commands. So if I run Docker PS, that's to list all the running containers. So as you can see, they're not running. Uh, but if you do it with a tack A, nope, tack P. I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> Just go through the alphabet. A B C D. Tack tack help is usually the way. It is tack A. Oh well. Um, but yeah, so you can, when it starts, you can see all your containers running and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So now I've done that, it's all gone. So it's sort of just a nice uh, way of managing your environment in source control and making sure that if you've got like 50 developers working on the same project, which is probably a bit excessive, but 
they're all going to be working on the same environment and if anything goes wrong all they have to do is destroy the environment everything is statement so the database is still going to be there the files are still going to be there they just have to recreate it rerun it um, and it should all work so yeah that's pretty much it has anyone got any questions chris uh, what's, uh, <laughs> so, um, no, uh, what's, what's the advantage with using uh, docker um, to do this over something like uh, vagrant that's just a standard kind of virtual machine so the the problem with Vagrant is you can Vagrant up a machine, and I know I've done this plenty of times, um, and just sort of left it running and had sort of like configuration that I've had to go into the machine, change because oh, I need something to work, and then I don't want to ever destroy that machine because I spent maybe an hour or two actually get it working how I need it for doing something that I'm working on at the time. Whereas with uh, Docker, you can't really do that. You can sort of SSH onto the container, but you get a very limited shell. The idea is that it's sort of an immutable object that you can only change with uh, the Docker Compose or the Docker file. Um, yeah, so, so it's very similar to using Vagrant with a provisioning script. But exactly. Say you, you can't. You, yeah, it's immutable. You have to provision it each time. And the nice thing is that everything's cached. Um, so if I just um, pull up the Docker file here, um, each line that you've got here, if you change it, the lines before it and the lines after it, I believe, will stay cached unless, um, and it will just rerun that command, uh, which can be a bit of a problem if you've got something later on that relies on that and it runs the cached version. So then that's where you get into the part where you have to start um, destroying and uh, all the images that it creates. Um, but it works kind of like a git commit kind of style where uh, it will keep a log of all the sort of changes that you've made. Uh, so if you do need to make a configuration change, you can quickly jump in, do that. So change the, uh, so this is where all the apt get stuff was running. So I can go make a change to the PHP ini file or something like that. Um, it will just rerun that one command and update it and then off you go. Um, and then you can push that change onto your branch. So anyone who switches to a feature branch that needs some different configuration, it's all there in your source control. So there's no sort of like transferring files, oh, you need this file, you need this file, um, upload it onto your machine and off you go. It's all in source control. And that's kind of the benefit is everybody will be working off the same machine for whatever part of the project that you're working on. So yeah, Any, anything else? Know about the Trellis project that's by the same people. Yeah, so, so yeah. That's, that's vagrant with Ansible provisioning. Mm. But there is a conversation I'm following at the moment where they're looking to Dockerize it. Oh, interesting. So that yeah. you might find that interesting to follow. Yeah, I might might have to have a look at that. I know a lot of other people have um, also been sort of doing the same sort of Docker bedrock stuff. What I'd, I'd, I'd like to do to continue the project on is sort of to make other containers like a composer container or a, like a MySQL container. Um, because if you want to do a uh, composer update or composer install and stuff like that, you have to do it from your local machine uh, within the project folder. Um, but ideally, I'd like it to just run on any computer without kind of any dependency on there apart from Docker itself. Um, so the idea would be to create a composer container that will just run from within that directory and install whatever you need um, as a command from your command line. So uh, this is where Docker becomes really powerful just to yeah, the exactly. Virtual. Yeah, the, the idea is I think you're supposed to kind of like have a container for each application that runs. So you'd have a container for Nginx as a load balancer and a container for PHP to run the application. Um, and then, yeah, database containers. So that's why I kind of split it out into two rather than have it all on one container. Um, so, yeah, and it only opens the ports that you define in the file and stuff like that. So it kind of, it really sort of like silos each individual thing. Um, so it's... it's would kind of work quite well for something like microservices and things like that. So you could just have one microservice running on it, pass it data, get it out kind of thing. So that's where it kind of starts to shine a little bit is that kind of it, it's easy, easy to automate because you know that it's just going to be this one file that runs and it's going to be that one fixed thing. So, yeah. Is Docker quite resource intensive? I haven't used it really. I've, like, I've so it is. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's like, I'm running it on Linux, so it's all completely native um, because I, it supports like native containerization and stuff. 
Um, on uh, Windows, it is becoming native, so it's in Hyper-V uh, if you have Windows Pro, uh, I think it is, uh, 10 Pro. Um, but it, if you don't, you have to use something called Docker Toolbox, which uses uh, a virtual box image. So it just creates one small virtual box image, which I think is something like 100 megs or something like that. I might be wrong. Uh, it's probably not more than a gig, though. Um, and yeah, the, the nice thing about it is it's like Vagrant. If you've got 10 projects and you've got 10 Vagrant boxes for each pro, you know, you've got maybe sort of 20 gigs, 30 gigs worth of um, virtual machines on your um, on your main machine, whereas this is just one, and then if you don't need it anymore, you just destroy the container, and then it's really quick to start up once they've already been built. It's literally seconds, not even that. Um, so that's kind of a, the, where it gets a bit nicer for development is because it is, so like I've got 80 gigs of VMs, sometimes more on my work machine just for different projects that I'm working on. So using Docker would just be amazing for a lot of those. So yeah, that's kind of some of the benefits. Anything else? No? Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.